All right, let's go over Windows Subsystem for Linux version 2. Uh, it's the thing I'm most excited about with the recent uh, update from Windows. I absolutely think this right here, it's kind of cool, especially if I'm using a Windows box. As a Linux user that uses it all the time, it, I love its workflow. I love a lot of the things in Linux, especially when it comes to like terminal and just editing and just getting around. It's just far easier for me in Linux now than it is in Windows, even though I've used Windows for 20 years. But needless to say, you need to do some things to get this enabled. And Microsoft didn't exactly make it easy for you. So I wanted to break down some of the misinformation out there and then also just kind of teach you all the prerequisites you need to understand about it, how to convert from like WSL 1 to 2, and, and just general installation tips. So with that, let's get into it. All right, before we get started, the balloons, uh, it's my daughter's birthday. Don't worry, by the time this video comes out, uh, yeah, these balloons should be gone. But if not, it's not like my daughter watches these videos, so I think I'm safe. And number two, I do live stream over on Twitch. Uh, I did cut back for the summer. I'm only doing one day a week on Monday mornings. So if you'd like to catch me live, please head over to the Twitch stream. Check me out over there. Uh, and if not, you can always head over to Chris Titus Tech Streams on YouTube and check it out afterwards. But with all that said, let's dive into WSL 2. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pop over onto my desktop real fast. All right, so on the desktop here, um, there's some cool stuff we have going. I went ahead and created a cheat sheet for everyone. And this cheat sheet is actually a pretty much a one-to-one -one copy from Microsoft. I left the source article where I pulled all this from. The reason why I made this is one, to add to it, and number two, uh, I don't trust Microsoft. They like to change their URLs, and I've been burned so many times in the past when I said, hey, here's the link to this article. And then people are like, hey, the link's broken. And it's because Microsoft changed their site for the 10,000th time. So I went ahead and left the source article. So if you don't want to use my website, you can use theirs. But I went ahead and made a copy paste feature so you can easily get in here, copy all the commands you need, paste them in and enable these things. Now, I'm not going to go exactly over my guide here because I want to teach you the way through the GUI in case you don't want to use PowerShell. But I use PowerShell for my guide as it's just a little faster. So with that, uh, let's pop over to Windows. And I'm just going to go ahead and pull my Windows machine right up here. And we're going to just look at this. Now, this is uh, easy to do. I'm going to go start run and then go appwiz.cpl. There's two things you need to do when using WSL in Windows. And then we're gonna type turn on Windows features, scroll all the way down, and there's gonna be two things you need. First one is Windows subsystem for Linux, and then the second thing is virtual machine platform. And you might be wondering, wait a second, Windows subsystem for Linux, well, that's WSL 1. It's required for WSL2, but for WSL2, you need virtual machine platform to really get the benefits of this. So with that done, I'm going to go ahead and cancel out of this because both of those are already installed. And then the next thing we need to do is go into our PowerShell. From our PowerShell, we can type WSL. This is the command that basically uh, shows you everything you need to do for Windows subsystem for Linux. Just typing the command itself launches directly into Windows subsystem for Linux. And as you see, I've got some uh, shenanigans going on as far as uh, launching XFCE and other things. That's for a future video as uh, I'm integrating Linux desktop and Windows desktop and kind of making it to where I can do some really crazy things in Linux, but uh, I get sidetracked too easily. Back, back to work here. Let's exit WSL. We'll just exit. And now that we're back here, we can actually type WSL dash dash help. And this will actually kind of give you a help guide to how to do it. So let's uh, go full screen here. And the big things here is just kind of one to get a list of your actual things. We can just do WSL dash list. But this only just says, hey, what's installed right now? The default is Ubuntu 20. Um, but if you had multiples in here, it would show those as well. And it would also show the default with a little hyphen default. Um, but to actually see what's going on and see what version your distributions are on, you'll go WSL-L-V for verbose. So dash L for list, dash V for verbose. It shows you what 
versions you're on. So if you've already used Windows Subsystem for Linux, there's a good chance it's already on version one and not version two because it will not auto upgrade. Uh, so if you need to do that, there's a couple things on WSL after you get it installed, you've launched it, you've, you've got everything going. Well, coming back into the website here, uh, first thing you wanna do is set the default version, WSL set default version two, and then install your system. Now, if you've installed it after doing the defaults, it goes ahead and of course defaults to version two. However, if not, down here at the bottom, you can actually go into setting the version. So you would just go WSL set version, the distribution name, and then the version number. So let me go ahead and practice that for you. So in this instance, it would be WSL dash dash set version. And then this is where you go just like the Ubuntu dash 20.04. So you go Ubuntu dash 20 dash 04, and then you'd put the version. So if I wanted to downgrade this and use version one, I could put one here, but obviously we want to do number two. Number two gives you literally 20 X performance and it's way more stable. So uh, WSL version two is light years ahead of version one. So you type this, it'll say, hey, the conversion is processed, please wait a few minutes. It does take a couple minutes for this conversion to take place, but obviously since it's already on the requested version, it says it's on the, that version, but wait for it to be finished. And then you can always do that listing command to see what's going on. I like to always do list verbose or that dash L dash V because it'll tell me, is it running? Uh, what version it is on, and how many Linux distributions I have on this system. So really important to know, this is kind of how to set up WSL. Obviously, I've set up a couple extra things with it. In probably the next video, I'll go over how to actually utilize WSL in a service environment to where you'll, you can launch full-blown desktop environments. You can launch uh, pretty much anything you want from terminal. So uh, I can interface directly with it from, uh, I think, PowerShell, I think it can actually take commands from it, let's see. So if you type bash from PowerShell, then you can do like gvim, and it'll actually launch into certain things. I've, I've set it up in a certain way to where I can always have my Linux going, and I can access any Linux tool I want directly from here, which is, is kind of neat. Uh, a very cool tool to have. I'll go into accessing this. I'm trying to make it more cohesive with like a terminal emulator and all kinds of just cool ways to do it. Have I said cool enough? I think I think I have. So we're going to move on from here. So that's getting started with WSL2. Uh, I think this is really key for a lot of reasons for one, accessing ext4 drives. It's been kind of an Achilles heels of Windows trying to access that dual boot. I, I dual boot all the time into Linux, obviously, as I'm using Linux mainly as my main daily driver. I have Windows around for some gaming and just miscellaneous compatibility things. But for the most part, I'm always in Linux and having WSL2 there when I'm in Linux kind of is a nice feature to have. Uh, I'll go more into integration and actually launching into the services and, and integrating it further into Windows to where Linux is kind of like its core. You can actually utilize almost everything you possibly want in Linux on Windows without having to really lose things. Although I, you know, I still won't make it as a daily driver because it's Windows. Come on. <laughs> so with all that said, let me know your thoughts down in the comments as uh, I'm always interested to see what everybody is coming up with. A lot of the things I'm doing, I did during a live stream. And uh, I got to say, I'm really excited about kind of like this uh, Franken system I'm making. I, I'm going to call it, I think, Ubundos. That's a horrible name. Still working shop workshop in the title, but be looking for it. And with that, a big shout out to all my patrons. Without you, I couldn't make videos like this one, and I'll see you in the next one.